Welcome to Girl Talk. We are sitting here just a few short days, weeks before the holidays. It's days, isn't it? Yeah. Woo! It's creeping up on us. It's so mm -hmm. fast. And we're here at Bella Domicile having a lovely time. And how are you guys doing? Are you I'm feeling? afraid. I know. I'm afraid because I can I tell she's got something Jessica's up her sleeve. Got, well, I also have a bag here, which is giving it away. <laughs> well, I want to talk holidays. I'm so in the holiday spirit. I love this time of year. We finally got snow, which I don't love the cold, but I like having a white Christmas. It is pretty. It is. And I talked, we haven't had one in a couple years, if you remember. We've had a couple brown Christmases. Right. Well, that just doesn't feel the same. It's not the same. And I talked last time we were together about how I start my Mariah Carey Christmas CD. <laughs> on Thanksgiving Day. Goodness. So that got me thinking because I think it's the best song out there. So I wanted to talk about the top holiday songs. But first I want to put on really, you guys are going to think I'm the <laughs> cheesiest person ever. But I got these things that... Oh, for dogs. No, well, okay, so I knew there might be a black sheep, so I got an extra one. So you guys pick your favorite and we'll wear them during the segment. But... <sighs> I got one for Antonia too. You can't see her because she's behind the camera. Oh, I love And man. some chocolates. So we're gonna I'll, celebrate. I'll do the chocolate. Well, you got to do the hat and the chocolate. <laughs> you can't, too. You're not getting your chocolate unless you do the hat. That's I'll the be rule. a reindeer. Okay, so we got chocolates. Okay, now oh, so I'm cute. in the spirit. Aww, Antonia, reindeer. Aww. Okay, so we'll Thanks, have her put that on. You can't see her. All right, now we're ready to ready? talk about the top, top holidays. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. What if okay. those are perfect? We're not going to sing, are we? No, no singing. Oh, okay, good. I can't sing. Can so I can't a little bit of this. Okay, okay, so do you know, do you want to do top five or top ten? We better do top five, okay. just okay. for a time. Okay. okay. So, top five holiday song. Are you ready? Yeah. A Holly Jolly Christmas by Burl Ives. Good one? That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, okay. that's a classic. Everybody likes Number it. four. I feel like we need a drum roll. <laughs> Number four, The Christmas Song by Nat King Cole. Oh yes, pretty Nat good. King Cole. Classic. classic. Number three, and one of my favorites, Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms. Is that how you say that? Helms. That'd, that'd be good for these kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. See? Jingle Bell. Oh, mine doesn't have anything. Okay. Right. Number two, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee. Yes. Good yes. one. We're picking up. And yes, number we'll pick one, up. holiday song is. Did is you it, guess is it? it? Is it your Mariah Carey All song? All I want for Christmas no. by Mariah no. Carey. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it is the best. This was just Jessa <laughs> looking for validation. Yes. Which is okay, you know, it's, it's I all do, happy Christmas stuff. I do stuff, love that so. song though. It's Isn't one of those it? where I, if I'm in the car, I kind of look around. And then you start singing all by yourself. <laughs> you're belting it out, and it sounds awful. I know. Oh, I'm sure you're not going to hear it today. Ellen. You just turn Mariah up enough that you sound good accompanying Smart. her. Yeah. See, I got you it figured, figured it out. <laughs> okay, but we also have a really fun show for you today, too. So stay with us because we're talking bras, mm -hmm. which is a great topic because it's time, New Year, to throw out the old and get the new ones in. True. Absolutely. True. So our friend over at Contours is going to help us with that. We're also talking some really important holiday legal advice. And of course, we're going to catch up with the folks here at Bella. Love it. Can't wait. Stick with us here on Girl Talk. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Girl Talk. You may recognize this lovely space as we're enjoying ourselves here at Bella Domicile and we're going to catch up with those folks later in the show. But first, we are here. We are graced with the presence of <laughs> fabulous designer and owner of Contours. This is Tia Lynn. I'm sure you recognize her. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So we've got a lot to cover, but a very exciting topic to start out with. So we've, of course, covered some of the wonderful things that you do at Contours. Everyone raves about how different they feel once they finally get the right bra from you. Mm -hmm. And truly an incredible, uplifting experience. You, look, <laughs> you literally look thinner. I like that fun. We can't go back to the double boob bras that jab you all day long, the straps that are falling off. So the constant frustration of that is just really no fun. No. But you're doing something amazing to help us get over all of that. And talk to us about this bra drive. This is so exciting. It's the perfect time to clean out your top drawer and clear the clutter with the new year. And in doing so, we have a bra drive where you can bring in all of your gently used bras and they will be donated to the bra recyclers. Wow, bra recycler. Wonderful thing to do. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's probably lots of them out there that are needing 
Oh gosh, I've got dozens in my closet. Yeah. But I don't mm. even wear just because maybe I don't like the style or they're not the right fit or the print. So what a great way to reuse that. So I want to know more though about this bra recycler. Tell yeah. me about that. This is the greatest nonprofit organization. What they do is they, they collect all of the bras that are donated. They resize them so in their own system and then they send them to the women's shelters and women in need in the correct size so that those women aren't having things that are jamming them and have double boobs just as we've all suffered. <laughs> and so that way your donation is really helping someone and empowering them and helping them to feel confident and uplifted. It's a, it's a win-win because um, we're helping out some folks that could use um, a new bra <laughs> and we're clearing out our drawers and cleaning out the clutter. Bra recycler. I've heard both words never together. <laughs> yeah, I, it's Who a knew? really neat thing. So at Contours we are donating um, a thank you gift to you for each bra that you bring in you get a five dollar gift card to our store. Nice. Oh, all right. So, all right. So, even better. Make some room mm -hmm. and get some money to spend. Yeah. All right, yeah. so it does sound like we need to take a look in our top drawer and things that don't fit or maybe we just don't even like anymore. And I suppose our bodies change, so maybe they don't fit properly when they used to. Mm -hmm. um, how do we know for sure what to get rid of and maybe to hang on to? I think anything you haven't worn in the last month oh, really? should go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, there goes my whole top <laughs> drawer. <laughs> just about, yeah. <laughs> At least awesome. for your bras. Yeah. You know, for your cute little lacy 90s, you can hang out to those. They're good memories. Yeah. And you'll make memories again. Um, but when it comes to bras, most women wear two to three at a time. You know, maybe hold on to your strapless if it's still holding you up right, because that, that is a seasonal type of bra. Um, however, your sports bra, your t-shirt bra, the bra you wear with your blouses, those should all be really up to date. You mm -hmm. should be very comfortable in what you wear on a daily basis. I've found it helpful to think of what am I going to grab first? Mm -hmm. And you keep, if you keep grabbing the same thing, that tells you something about maybe the others. Yeah. Good to know. Well, I've got some work to do, <laughs> but I knew that. Uh, so let's talk. There's a lot of styles, obviously, at Contours. So do you bring out a huge selection for this event, or do you kind of gear it towards one or two? We do bring out a huge selection every time, unless a customer says that they only want to see a specific category, but we normally sneak in more anyway. Because we have a lot to get rid of, so <laughs> just go ahead and have a whole bra mm -hmm. intervention while you're, at, while you're there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Worth it. So it's almost New Year's resolution time as well, and I want to get this in really quick. Does everybody come to Contours on January 2nd? <laughs> maybe the first of the year to get that new sports bra because they're motivated and trying to work out. I know I do this every year, it seems yes. like. Yes, yes, yes. and yes. <laughs> um, every year, and it's, it's really, really fun. And so it's, it's, a, it's a good time to kind of come in and think about what you want to do this next year and gear up for it. More importantly, I think it's important when you go through transitions in life to face things carefully. There's no need to do every, you know, to switch out your entire wardrobe in one swoop right because you're going to change within the year so more often is better and okay, we should absolutely. quickly mention that bra fittings are free at contours mm -hmm. yes. love it absolutely mm -hmm. well absolutely go see Teelin and the team over at contours you will not be disappointed <laughs> and neither will your top drawer so <laughs> we'll be back with more girl talk after the break stick with us And welcome back to Girl Talk. We're filming today at Bella Domicile, where later on we'll talk about home improvement projects and how to get started, and that can be the toughest part sometimes. Mm -hmm. But right now, when your marriage ends, your role as a parent doesn't, it never does, and getting through the holidays can be a tougher, challenging situation. Joining us today is Richard Staley. He's an attorney with Team Staley Legal Services right here in Madison. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you, it's my pleasure. So this time of year is the holidays are in full swing. What do you see as a lawyer as issues and common, commonly? Well, around this time of year with all of the travel, celebrations, family gatherings, uh, seeing friends, that sort of thing, uh, we see an increase in ordinance violations, you know, speeding tickets, traffic tickets. Um, and unfortunately, you know, when you put some of those combustible elements together, we also see alcohol-related issues, uh, an increase in disorderly conduct, DUI uh, charges, that sort of thing. Interesting. Mm. Now, we know you also practice family law, correct? Mm -hmm. So what do you see in regards to that, I guess, lately around the holiday times? 
Well, the, the question I've been getting most often in my office is really in relation to custody and placement of children when parents don't live together. Mm -hmm. um, especially as you know, we have these holidays in November, December, January, all kind of right, boom, boom, boom. Uh, that does become a, a really tense point for a lot of families. Right. I can imagine. And talk to us a little bit about, this is a tough topic, but it is an important one. So share with us what legal custody means. And maybe, you know, talk, touch on the holidays too. You mentioned that can maybe be a time where it gets challenging with custody. Oh, most definitely. Uh, legal custody is the right of one parent or another to make uh, what are called major life decisions on behalf of a minor child. These are things uh, like medical care, uh, what schools to enroll in, uh, whether or not to participate in football or other inherently dangerous extracurriculars, and uh, particularly relevant to this time of year, what religious observations to participate in. Oh, I didn't even think about that. So yeah. what you're saying is maybe typically one parent would take legal custody where they would have the opportunity to make some of those big decisions for the children. Well, in Wisconsin, there are three options. There's sole custody, which is exactly that situation where you have one parent making the decisions. Uh, joint legal custody, where each parent has that equal share in the decision-making power. Uh, and then what's called joint legal custody with an impasse uh, provision, which is essentially just a tiebreaker mechanism that's built into oh. the agreement. Okay, I see. That, I was actually going to, I was just wondering that very <laughs> thing, because if you have joint, that seems like equal, but then what do you do when you disagree? It, so it sounds like that last option is the, the way to go with the, the impasse, so to speak. There are a lot of options uh, available. A, a lot of times it's uh, easiest just to have open communication and cooperation amongst the parents and uh, agreeing to things ahead of time is one way to alleviate most of these issues. Great. So it comes back to communication. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How is custody different than physical placement? I've heard those terms before. Uh, physical placement, sometimes people will think of that as uh, visitation or uh, physical custody, but physical placement is the term uh, that we like to use in the law. Um, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's where the child will physically be placed for a period of time. Um, now, the big difference that comes in, uh, where to spend Christmas Eve versus Christmas Day, as an example, uh, that's an issue of placement, which parent is exercising placement on a particular day. But the decision to take a minor child out of the country for winter break, encompassing all of those days, that is actually a custody decision. Mm -hmm. So you can see where some of those tensions come in right off the bat. Absolutely. So how are all of these different things decided? Because I'm, I'm guessing that's probably the most difficult part of the process. Well, in a, a contested divorce or a contested custody uh, issue, a lot of times if the parties can't agree, that goes to a judge or a court commissioner to make these type of decisions. Uh, but again, going back to the communication point, uh, one of the easiest ways is by a custody agreement between the parties where they can discuss these issues, uh, set a holiday schedule, that sort of thing, and kind of have a plan in place in writing that everyone can refer to uh, so that most of these issues don't come up. And when they do, uh, communication and cooperation can help alleviate them. Exactly. And someone like you. <laughs> there's, yeah. a lot to, there's a lot to know, and real quick before we go, just if folks at home are having these kinds of issues, it's a lot to navigate through. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're our expert here. <laughs> What's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, well, my phone or website are great options. Uh, email is always a great option, too. Okay. All right. So, again, this is Richard Staley. He's with Team Staley Legal Services in Madison. And we'll be back with more Girl Talk right after this. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We are at Bella Domicile today. It's off of Nesbitt Road here in Madison. Thank you for having us here today. Of course, thanks we for coming. We love being here. This is Kate. She's one of the designers here. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic today with home improvement because oftentimes, I think it can just seem like a really big, daunting task and undertaking. Yes. yes. And you just need a friend sometimes <laughs> to help you out, right? <laughs> That's Especially so true. That's with a very big true. project. So, What's the first thing to start thinking about when you are taking on a home improvement project? Yeah, so a couple of things come into play. You really want to know, we want to know, um, as well as you, um, what you want to invest in the space. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as that, your budget, also your priorities. What's the most important to you? Um, and quality, what, what are you looking for in your quality of cabinetry, right. your quality of appliances? So all of that kind of comes into play. 
Yeah, and I think about all of those things, of course, when thinking about remodel, but when you talk about budget, how do you have any idea when you kind of go in to make a budget what things will cost and what budget might even be appropriate or, or feasible? Yes, and that's a great question. Um, typically what we do, um, especially if it's a kitchen remodel um, involving a lot of cabinetry, um, is we'll come up with a couple different plans. We'll count up all the cabinetry um, as well as the square footage of your countertop um, and go from there. So really cabinetry and countertops help solidify um, a budget um, as far as the kitchen goes. So it really is pretty individual. I mean, it's it's about your space and you're gonna right. come into that specific space and help determine kind of Exactly, okay. yep. Got it. I like how that's kind of methodical. How many cabinets, <laughs> how many inches? Uh, it me, is. To me that just makes more sense rather than just pulling a number out of the air or... Can, right, yeah, yeah, there's some math involved um, mm -hmm. and we really wanna make sure that the, the space plan works for you. Um, so for everyone in every kitchen, that's very different. Right. And that's one thing I love about you guys here at Bella Domo Sal. It's not just making it look pretty or, right. or cool. It's functional. It's functional in yeah. how you use your space. And you guys really hone in on that. Yeah. I, I think that's really neat. Yeah, that's important. Is there a, a common concern that folks share in starting a home project like this? Yes, I think most people, when they take on a large renovation, they don't know where to start. <laughs> um, and Seriously. so they, yeah. and they're <laughs> it, coming in here is the first step. I mean, honestly, we'll ask you enough questions to kind of get some of that information out of you, that vital information, um, and we'll go from there. So really, it's just come in here, don't worry, have no, have no fears, and we'll kind of we'll get to the point that we need to be at. Maybe that's a, a, a good tip if you're feeling overwhelmed to where to get started. Just, just come talk, in. just come, <laughs> yes. come in. It's come inspiring in. to come in. You kind of get excited and True. get ideas. And you might be surprised what you wind up liking, what different styles are mm -hmm. here to see. Definitely. And it's point. very different. I mean, Hells is a great website that we have a lot of clients go on and look at some some photos, gorgeous kitchens, bathrooms, whatnot. Um, but coming here and seeing it in person, seeing all the storage solutions that you can mm -hmm. have inside of your cabinetry, that's really important. And there's cookies. And there's cookies. <laughs> there's cookies and coffee. coffee. Yes. <laughs> so how do you know how much help you're going to need for this project, whether it maybe seems smaller or seems bigger? How do yeah. you know? Well, and it depends, too. I mean, you watch HGTV and they have those weekend <laughs> warriors that go at it and do it themselves in a weekend. Um, so if it's a smaller project, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, a lot of people don't need a designer. Um, but there's a lot of decisions that need to be made, mm -hmm. down to the construction of your cabinetry, your hardware. Should I have knobs or pulls on my doors or drawers? Um, do I want a panel plus door that's all hardwood? Um, so there's a lot of decisions that I don't think people understand um, that they'll need to make. Yeah. It's not just about what, am I gonna do a stain or a paint finish on my cabinet doors. I didn't even think of those. Well, <laughs> and not only just the aesthetic component to those decisions, but probably a lot of questions that you might not think to even ask yourself about Definitely. durability, longevity, things of that nature that need to fit your own lifestyle. Completely. So it's so important to have someone help out with those things. I bet you get a lot of folks coming in here mid-project. <laughs> We do, and so, yeah. yep, anytime if you want to start it off yourself and feel like you can, you're ramped up and you yeah. can get it done, um, if you get stuck, come in here and we'll help, we'll when, help save. When you get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't want to say it, but I can say it. So talk to us about kind of the steps then that Bella takes. You know, you, you mentioned you come in, at some point you're going to the space. Walk us through the sort of one, two, three. Yeah, so we have a lot of great information that we can pass along to you as our clients. Um, one of which is what to expect when you're remodeling. So we give our clients a sheet, kind of list, yes, you're gonna have dust, it's gonna be a bit dirty, um, it's inconvenient, especially kitchens. Um, if it's your only bathroom, that can be very inconvenient. Um, so things like that, we help kind of set the tone um, so there's no surprises. Um, what we also do is our three column budget. Um, so that's a great reference. We give, based on the number of the cabinetry and the square footage of your countertops, we give you a good, better, best on what you can plan to invest oh, in Ooh. your space. Yeah. So yeah, that's really helpful. We find that our clients really, really like that because when they come in, they haven't done a renovation before. They have no idea what to expect, what they need to invest to make their dreams happen. Mm -hmm. You guys really think of everything. And yes. we've talked before about trying to eliminate those surprises, even to the point of you're going to have work people in your home, there's going to be trucks outside, right. in your driveway, that kind of thing. Yep, exactly. Oftentimes there's porta potties outside. Um, so we really try to um, go through and think of all those details and really make oh, you aware of them. 
So with all those details, the other thing that you're the expert in is keeping the project on track, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we do give you a project timeline. Um, oh, so nice. Yeah, so we try to kind of set the stage. Um, a lot of times if that if there's, it goes out of whack, it's um, due to different decisions that need to be made on a timely basis. So we found that we can come in and help with that and really make sure all the decisions are decided um, before the project starts. Um, we usually like to make sure we have all the materials here before the project starts, even with demo. Um, so we're not waiting for anything. Um, you're not waiting for your cabinetry to arrive. That's so smart. You don't, sorry if I interrupt, but you don't jump the gun and just get in there because you can. You wait right. until it's the right moment so that you can go one, two, three and keep yeah, everything moving. Yeah, very methodical. Um, yeah, we don't like any surprises as mm -hmm. much as you don't. So. Yeah. yeah, and those projects are, can be really tricky. You can't do this until you do that. And, right. And the order of events is, is kind of important. Yeah. And That's we're why you guys are the experts. Yeah, we're an advocate for our clients. And so we work with a lot of different vendors and we want to make sure things come on time. If there's setbacks, we do whatever we can to, to advocate for you. Awesome. Kate, thanks for being with us today. Yes, of course. And you can come see her here. She's a designer here at Bella Domicile. Thanks for having us here today as yes, well. We thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for coming. And thank you to all of our guests and thank you for watching. You can find us next time only on Girl Talk on Wisconsin's 57.